What's up, y'all? It's Calvin here, and I want to holler at you guys about the latest cyber threat called Killware. And uh, this has been going on since 2019 all across the country, uh, California, Maine, Nevada, New Jersey, uh, Kansas, Florida, so on and so forth where water treatment facilities have been attacked and it doesn't just stop there there's been gas plants and you know i have covered some of these things but um this is starting to take a turn where there's going to be some real action being taken and i feel like um the average everyday person is not going to fare well once these things are put into place but from what i'm seeing so far it looks like the corporations which are acting as if they are government um they are seem, seeming to be having more of the concern when it comes to these hacking attacks that can, keep in mind, kill people, okay? All right, and uh, to jump right into it, there's an article called The Next Big Cyber Threat Isn't Ransomware, ransomware It's Killware, and It's Just As Bad As It Sounds, all right? And we're going to touch on a few things in this article, starting with this paragraph right here. It says, that attack on Oldsmar, Florida which was a water treatment facility. It's uh, not too far from Tallahassee, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, somebody hacked into it and they raised the sodium hydroxide levels. And um, it was to the point that if somebody would have drunk the water, it would have made them extremely sick or probably killed them because sodium hydroxide, for those of you to know, is lye, like the stuff that they use to make soap. And it is not to be ingested at all, not even a little bit. And another question that we need to be asking is, why is it there in the first place? Uh, I doubt that's the way the guy created the water, all right? But I find it interesting whenever I looked up sodium hydroxide, and all I did was type it in Bing and just scroll down a little bit, and it said it plain as day. What are the dangers in sodium hydroxide? And it says, owing to its poisonous effects, it can also cause bleeding, vomiting, and diarrhea. Inhalation of sodium hydroxide can also result in inflammation, of the respiratory tract leading to lung problems like pulmonary edema fever sneezing runny nose sore throat and pneumonia are some of the severe consequences of coming in contact with this chemical and right there by inhaling this stuff not just ingesting it by taking a hot steamy shower or you're boiling something um you could end up with something that sounds awful similar to COVID-19 symptoms. So I find that very interesting that they have this in the water. And I also find it interesting that in none of the articles that I've read concerning these uh, attacks with the water and so on and so forth is that nobody is talking about removing anything from the water that if it was increased that it could hurt somebody like nobody's talking about getting it out of there they're just you know what I'm saying milling around and dealing with the WEF which I was telling you guys about the cyber pilot gun it's all about cyber security and this is just another situation like the 9-11 attack where the terrorist was the boogeyman and now we've got the pandemic and it's the unvaccinated people that is the boogeyman and you know what I'm saying when it comes to this unknown people who are out here causing these attacks and stuff like that uh, it isn't like they're bringing the poison to the party when it comes to the water the poison's already there so uh, once again you know something that we we uh, really need to focus on when dealing with some of these problems you know what I'm saying and questions that we need to uh ask when dealing with our officials and our you know local councils and uh, stuff like that because um it, it it sounds like it's a pretty easy fix but at any rate um that's what it's talking about when it's talking about the attack on Oldsmar, which took place in february uh if i didn't mention that anyways it says that attack on Oldsmar, florida water system in florida was intended to distribute contaminated water to residents and that should have gripped the our in, entire country, all right? And it, it should have made the entire country aware, but it shouldn't gripped us in fear, all right? It, it, it should have had us paying attention to where we were asking the right questions. But instead, these uh, stories don't really get blown up all that big, you know what I mean? So it would be impossible, and that is the desired result. But moving on down to the weaponized technology section where it says like Mayorkas and for those of you who don't know who Mayorkas is he is the Secretary of Homeland Security all right and it says private sector computer security experts warn that so-called cyber physical security incidents 
involve, involving a wide range of critical national infrastructure targets could lead to a loss of life. So this is very serious. And it says those include oil and gas manufacturing and other elements of the energy sector, as well as water and chemical systems, transportation and aviation and dams. So for those of you taking Greyhound buses, taking planes, for people who live near dams, you know what I'm saying? Like this can be a very serious situation where a lot of people can die. All right. And the the thing that you need to remember is that there is a person behind this that are controlling these things. OK, so anyways, moving on, it says the rise of consumer based products such as smart thermostats and autonomous vehicles like Tesla's means Americans live in a ubiquitous, which means present, appearing or found everywhere. All right. Cyber physical system world. So it means that we, we live in a world where technology is everywhere. All right. And it says that has become a potential minefield of threats, said Wham Voster, senior research director at the security firm Gartner. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that, I will leave a link below so that you can read their about page. OK, and um, moving on to the next paragraph, it says in a report, July 21, Gartner said, there is enough evidence of increasingly debilitating and dangerous attacks to expect that by 2025, cyber attacks will have weaponized operational technology environments to successfully harm or kill humans. OK, so they're telling us to look forward to these cyber attacks to kill people, not to, just that they can, but look forward to it killing people. All right. And this is what I was telling you guys about the World Economic Forum with uh, the cyber polygon. If you haven't taken a look at that, take a look at it. This is practice for what you're seeing right here that I'm reading. All right. And uh, I'm going to move down. Let me see. Move down to the section called liability. All right. And even though they are emphasizing that there can be loss of life, we'll see where the true concern really, really lies. Is it really the loss of life? Or is it something else? All right. And it says cybersecurity experts warn government and corporate leaders that they could be held financially or legally liable if breaches of computerized systems they oversee are found, found to have had a human impact. In the U.S., the FBI, the NSA and Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which is called CISA, have already increased the frequency and the details provided around threats to critical infrastructure related systems, most of which are owned by private industry. And I was telling you guys over and over again that these corporations, they are a part of the government. You know what I'm saying? And this right here gives more credence to what I'm saying, because you have the FBI. All right. And keep in mind, right before it says, it says in the U.S. So there's no mistake what it's talking about. This isn't conjecture. This isn't some conspiracy theory. All right. The FBI, the NSA and CISA, they all working together. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, you'll also see that the post office is in on it, too. And at a ground level, which is real crazy. But um, you will see, you know, what I mean, how these corporations work and make these government moves. But I uh, just wanted to bring that out there. But anyways, moving on with this, uh, this uh, paragraph here, it says soon CEOs won't be able to plead ignorance or retreat behind insurance policies. All right. And when you're talking about the Hegelian dialectic, meaning problem, reaction, solution, this is where they're trying to get the solution right here. If they can get out of being responsible for anybody dying, you're going to start seeing terrorist attacks with these uh, cyber hacks and things of that nature left and right. I promise you, because that seems to be the stage where they're at now. They're just trying to figure out how they can get out of being liable, because that seems to be a really big problem. So moving on, it says the firm, which is Gat, uh, excuse me, the firm, which is Gartner. All right. Uh, estimated that the financial impact of cyber physical security attacks resulting in fatalities will surpass $50 billion within a few years. Real quick, something that I found very interesting about this particular paragraph is this timeline that keeps popping up. And if you remember earlier, it says that around 2025, they're estimating that people will be harmed or killed by these cyber attacks, okay? And if you remember a week ago, I did a story covering a superstorm that was supposed to affect the internet, all right, and cyber security. Okay, another theme that keeps popping up. 
And this last paragraph here, and it says, even with the most concerted government efforts, five or six years, which would be 2026 and 2027, will be needed to establish systems and encourage or where needed require users to protect themselves, cybersecurity and vital services. Such a timeline will take us well into the coming solar danger. So the same time that they expect all these cyber attacks, we're supposed to be in the middle of a solar storm crisis that's supposed to affect North America more than any other place. So, um, uh, once again, very interesting. Just remember that the poison is already in the water. Okay. And, and then it goes on to say, even without taking the actual value of a human life into the equation, Garda concluded, the cost for organizations in terms of compensation, litigation, insurance, regulatory fines, and representation loss will be significant, okay? And this research firm called Gartner, they are working for these companies to, you know what I'm saying, to find out the pros and cons of what their next moves are. So they're just figuring out right in front of us what their next move is going to be. And you can clearly see reading this article that that's where the onus is, you know what I'm saying, to try to stop up, you know, the liability issues that the government is having. And if you don't believe that these guys operate and do things that governments do, let's take a look at Amazon, all right? And this took place in Alabama, and this has happened within the, the last year. Uh, we have this article here that came out in um, December of 2020 right here, and it says, Amazon is fighting hard to stop its warehouse workers from unionizing, okay? And we're going to see some of the ways that they tried to do that. All right. And if you look at this article right here, it says Amazon threatened layoffs, warehouse, warehouse closure ahead of Alabama vote, union says. And you see here, Amazon improperly swayed the result of the recent union election at an Alabama warehouse. All right. And if you scroll down here, it says the union alleges that Amazon threatened employees with mass layoffs or the shutdown of the warehouse, which pays a starting wage that is nearly double the state's minimum wage. The objections also claim Amazon created the ballot collection box on its premises in violation of an order from the labor board. The box installed by the U.S. Postal Service, which, by the way, also monitors social media, all right? And they're working with Amazon at the ground level to rig a freaking election, okay? All right, and it uh, goes on to say, uh, the box installed by the U.S. Postal Service at Amazon request is a metal cabinet with slots leading to lock drawers, not a big blue mailbox. The union claims that Amazon put a tent around the mailbox to make it look like a voting booth and posted its central campaign message near the box. All right, and if that's not enough for y'all, check this out. Amazon changes timing of traffic lights in Alabama town to derail unionization drive. Okay, and if you can see down here, it says online retail giant Amazon was so desperate to scuttle a unionization drive among warehouse workers in Alabama that it actually had traffic light times changed. A pro-union publication says it confirmed the rumors with the county. So they went to the county and found out that they was able to change the lights. So it's fact, all right, that they did this. And this is the type of stuff the government does. You know what I'm saying? But yet you got Amazon just coming in and doing what they want to just simply because they don't want their workers, the people, you and me, to be able to unionize and put something in place to protect ourselves. And that's what this is all about, all right? So I hope you take heed to the warning signs that are being put before us and, uh, you know, use your time wisely to prepare. And uh, another thing that you can do concerning the cyber situation is to download information. If you do not know uh, how to skin a goat, a deer, a chicken or whatever, download that information. You might not have the equipment to do it now or whatever. Just download the information. All right. Just just get that now and, you know, work to do all the other stuff later. But uh, any fighting techniques that you 
you wanted to learn any recipes, anything like that, um, any type of uh, quality of life type things that you would might want to hang on to in a crisis time. Like, for instance, I really like ice cream. So I looked up uh, a whole bunch of different ways to make it. I can make it with electricity or without it. You know what I'm saying? With just two bowls and some ice and just all kind of stuff, different recipes, different methods. So, uh, you know, uh, these are the types of things that you may want to be seeking as, as far as downloading information. But download it in all forms, MP3, MP4, copy and paste, however it got to go down. You like get the information. It's going to be very, very key because, um, you know, uh, uh, amongst the righteous, the, uh, the, uh, the scripture tells us, you know, what I'm saying uh, that we shouldn't concern ourselves with the, the uh, wicked punishment, but how the righteous shall be saved. And this is how these things work. Getting this information because you you might be seeking out something that could help somebody else. You might have one piece of the puzzle and they've got the rest here. So on and so forth. You know, there's all types of ways that the most high can work and be able to make something very beautiful happen. You know what I'm saying? But it only will happen when, you know, people come together that are prepared to bring something to the table. And uh, that goes into faith without works is dead. So you, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you have to stay ready during these times. This is going to be, you know, uh, an extremely um, active situation that will, that will require your participation um, that we are dealing with, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, particularly for, for, for those who being righteous, because there's so much, uh, that you know is targeted against you guys you know what i'm saying like anybody out there that is that is spitting the truth you know what i'm saying like everything is aimed at you to root you out you know what i mean because like you're the enemy to all of this you're the one that's shining a light on all of this you know what i'm saying that is uh going on so uh you know with these cyber attacks and stuff like that you better set up something that you can work with offline you know what i'm saying maybe thinking about going like radio or like whatever take it old school where they they can't really f fiddle with you on uh the uh net but uh you know these are the types of things that we need to have our minds on so i hope this resonates with you guys and uh you know reiterates the fact that this is not a game and these people are not playing with us and to take the preparation and the time that we have very seriously okay because like the time is now just a pie roast the lord is a man of war and the lord is his name yeah, yeah, yeah.